from earlier today. It happened within the last three hours and four hours going on now. We know that three buildings at least were on fire and one of the buildings collapsed. We're also speaking with witnesses who saw the shooting happen. Trina McConnell Poto says that she was driving through the area when officers arrived on scene and tried to approach the suspect. We noticed that there was some highway patrolmen um, SUVs come in front of us and turn to block the intersection and a truck carrying some uh, army style men with automatic weapons piled out of a truck. They uh, they were like an armored vehicle and they busted in, they blew the door in and all, like threw like a percussion, something loud, boom. It was just bang, 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 bang. I mean, it was a lot of, a lot of gunfire and um, a lot. I mean, it was automatic, so it was just, it was a lot. Um, automatic rifles just constant bang, 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 bang. Yeah, you could see the guys shooting. I mean, you could see the actual gunfire hitting things. I mean, so it was, it was scary because it was coming from both ends, from inside the building and from outside shooting. So you could hear everything and you knew they were hollering. You were trying to get, we were just trying to get out of the way, you know, hoping nothing would get us. And uh, what you're hearing is from one of the eyewitnesses in Tallahena. Now, to kind of backtrack, uh, originally uh, we heard of a fire in Tallahena, and then we sent uh, 4029's Josh McCole on the scene, and uh, he told us that uh, three buildings, as you mentioned, had collapsed, one on fire. Now we're trying to connect these shootings to the fire. We also spoke with a woman who ran a real estate business downtown who says a loss like this will affect everyone in town. Well, my grandson texted me early this morning and said that his great-grandmother's office building was on fire and I told him he was kidding. He said, no, really, Grandma, it is. And so I rushed down here and it was still in flames. Everybody's just heartbroken. You know, it's, it's, it's sad. There's so much history and that's the cornerstone, literally, of Tallahanna is right there. And uh, it, it's hard to take. It really is hard to take. All right, and uh, just to kind of backtrack a little bit, this happened just about four hours ago in downtown Tallahena on Dallas Street between 2nd and Elm. And we understand that three buildings uh, caught fire and one collapsed and a very heavy fire and police presence still on the scene right now. And also from multiple witnesses, we are hearing that there were several gunshots. And this is in Tallahena and LaFleur County. Yes, and you heard uh, that one woman saying a, a large vehicle, an armored vehicle, which could mm -hmm. point to a SWAT team. Of course, you're trying to um, confirm uh, what we are hearing, but multiple uh, firefighters as well as uh, multiple police, including uh, Tallahanna police, were on the scene. And of course, we'll continue to bring you the coverage very late. It's outstanding. They've been pouring in food and water, and and uh, you know we we can't thank them enough for that. How long, how long have you been on the force here? I've been here about 17 years. Did you say this is the wildest thing? It's, it's pretty wild, yes sir. <laughs> and the officers that were injured, what does the Tallahanna Police Department say to those troopers? Oh, it just, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad everybody's it's going to be okay, and that's uh, uh, it's about it. Just. Can I, is there any mass director over here? Thank you so much, right, Chief. You. I appreciate thank your you. time. Do you, have any, do you have any info? Hello, I'm Jeff. What Jeff is your Fischl. first name? Jeff Fischel. How do you spell your last name? F-I-S-H-E-L. And just a little bit closer if you don't mind. Well. Um, so uh, what is you guys' role in this right now? Our role in this is purely supportive. Um, the initial incident that occurred, uh, OHP handled that on, on their own with their own medical personnel that are uh, employed by OHP. Uh, when we were activated due to the, the fire, we came down with a for, as a supportive role. Us, along with emergency management, we set up rehab on both sides of the scene. It was a fairly large scene, so we had to do rehab on two different sides of the of the scene. Um, did you have to treat? Did you have to treat firefighters, or did you treat anybody? No injured firefighters. Rehab is, is simply a supportive thing to make, uh, basically, to make sure that uh, they are okay to re-enter the fire. Oops, sorry, re-enter the fire scene. Um, they come out. We met, we. Mo uh, we monitor their vital signs, make sure they get fluid hydrated, and uh, if they're good to go back in, they will go back in. How how close are you responding to this as if this was like terrorism or, or a bomb? Is, there, is your response pretty similar? Uh, how would we, would we respond to it fairly similar? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we responded to this like it was any, uh, any large incident. We brought down uh, 
you know, for lack of a better term, we brought down the cavalry with us. There was EMS, there was emergency management, there was the medical reserve corps. There was a large amount of uh, medical supplies on scene to handle uh, whatever we would have encountered. So similar to a response to a tornado. Sure, yeah. Um, at least in this case, it was a little more isolated. A tornado can be a very broad area. Um, but uh, for the most part, any large incidents, incident would, would get the same response unless there's any special uh, dangers or hazards that exist. But again, you did not treat any of the troopers, any of the SWAT team members? No, sir. They were treated by their own medical By their own people, yes. Thank you so, Thank you so much. much. You're welcome. Can we get your name one more time? Jeff is my first name. Last name is Finn.